Hi, and welcome to part 6 of my guide, Backgammon for Complete Beginners. Well, we now know how to make basic moves. How to roll doubles and move twice. And how to start a game from the opening position. But it's time to consider why we choose certain moves over others. In the previous videos I've given examples of what is the correct move from a certain position. And I think it's time to stop teasing and start explaining as to why these moves are preferable to others. But first, time to consider what are we trying to accomplish when we're playing a game of backgammon. Well, obviously we're trying to win the game, and as I've mentioned, that is by, done by moving your checkers around the board, into your home board, and then subsequently off into the checker tray to win. But if it were a simple matter of just advancing the checkers around the points in any hold haphazard fashion, then it wouldn't be much of a game, it'd just be a lottery. So this is where basic backgammon strategy comes into play. At the same time as a player is trying to advance their checkers around to their home board, they're also trying to hinder their opponent from doing exactly this. How does this work then? Right, for an example, we're going to start again back in the opening position that we had in the last video. And we're going to make a move for red. We're going to imagine that red started the game. And red has rolled in the opening move a 6 and black has rolled a 5. Now this is the opening roll, as we discussed before. Red has the higher number on the die. So, red is the first player to make the move, and he makes the move using the 6 and the 5. And what he does here, again, the correct move here, is to take one checker from this point here, the 24 point, the very last point on the board, farthest away from the home board, and advances it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. He's advanced that first checker all the way to what we call his mid point, halfway around the board to here. And this is a, the best move in this position. Not only does it get a checker a long way towards getting it round to his home board, but it also leaves it safe, which I'll come to in a moment, and it clears one of the back checkers here, which is sometimes the hardest ones to, to get free. They are left behind, they're the furthest back, and therefore, it, as a general principle, you want to get these around and out of this area, back towards your home board as quick as possible. So this is the right move for this position. Now let's put it back where we were, and we'll start the game again. Only this time, as we showed in the last game, we're going to start it with black having a 6 and red rolling the 1 for the opening move. Now, we made the move last time when black's move with the higher number on the 6 and the 1. And we'll make the same move as we did last time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and the 1 from here. There. Now, the next move, let's play Red's move again with the 6-5 and see what's different. Now, Red cannot make the same move, and the reason is this. When you move a checker, if there is more than two, uh, excuse me, more than one enemy checker on any point, that point is blocked, and you cannot land a checker on it. So if Red tried to repeat the same move with the 6-5 in this position, he couldn't, because if you take a checker from the back here and move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it can no longer land on this point. There are at least two enemy checkers on this point, and it's blocked. Nor could he move one of these 5 points for this reason. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In the starting position here, 
there are, of course, five checkers here, so there are at least two here. So the red checker cannot land here either. Therefore, neither back checkers can be moved because black made this first move which blocked this escape. So red is now forced to make a different move with the 6-5. And a small thing it's important to remember is that in backgammon, if you can make a move, you have to make it. And if you have to choose between two moves, say from the 5 or the 6, you have to make the highest value move. It is a forced move. We've seen that now Red can't play this move to here that he wants to, so he's forced to make the 6 somewhere else. He can make the 6 from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, for example, and still has the 5 to make. Say so he could make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But this is not ideal for Red, because he now has a, what we call a loose checker here on this point. And we'll come to that in a moment as to why that's not necessarily a good thing. But we can now see that just by making a simple move with Black 6-1 initially, he has affected Red's play. It is a strategy that he has made with that 6-1 that has prevented Red from escaping a checker. And it's a particularly effective move because there are three points next to each other here that are all blocked. And in backgammon this is called a prime. In this case a three prime because three points next to each other are blocked. If, for example, black had moved at some point and held this position it would be a four prime. There would be four lots of blocked points. And this is the key to containing your opponent's checkers, keeping them back so that only certain roles will get them out, get them past. The ultimate prime that can occur in a game of backgammon is a six prime. Although you can have a seven prime, the effective one is a six prime. And the reason for this is the maximum number you can roll on a dice is of course 6. With a prime 6 spaces long, 6 blocked points, even if the red checker were here, in front of it, no matter what number red would roll, he could not escape this checker. Even with a 6, he could not, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, that is blocked, he could never get past it. And one of the key strategies that players aim for in backgammon is to develop primes to contain their opponent's checkers. Alright, let's get these back to where we were.